to The Story Corner. I'm Kester, Chief Storyteller around here, and if you like a good book, you've come to the right place. This afternoon, I'm going to be reading a taster of Lucy's Pet Dilemma. Lucy's Pet Dilemma is by Kate Bennett, and it's illustrated by Jenny England. And I'm going to read you the little bit on the back so you can find out a little bit about it before we get going. Lucy has always wanted a pet of her own, so when her second best friend Charlotte tells Lucy she's moving and can't take Albertine with her, Lucy happily offers to look after her. Lucy's parents agree to a trial, but things don't go to plan and Lucy has to find a solution fast. I don't know if you've got a pet or if you've always wanted one. Lucy actually already has a pet, but it's not hers, it's the family pet, and what she wants is one all to herself. So, I'm just going to read you the first chapter. This book is published by Celeping Press, and there's a dedication in the front of it that says, from Kate Bennett, thanks to my family and the little mouse I had as a child for being the inspiration for this story. And there, is a little picture of the mouse. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. Chapter one, inheritance. Lucy wanted a pet, not just any pet, but one that was hers, that she could look after on her own. She didn't want to share it with her brother, Matthew, they already shared Buddy, their smelly little Maltese terrier. Lucy loved Buddy, but he was a bit boring as far as dogs go. He spent most of his day asleep under the old battered lounge chair that Dad sat on when he watched television. When he wasn't sleeping, Buddy was rolling around on the grass outside or eating the leftover vegetables that Mum fed him. These are what made him smell. Mum insisted on giving Buddy all their food scraps. It didn't matter what it was, it always ended up in Buddy's bowl. Meat was okay. Buddy's poo was always a little soft after eating large quantities of Mum's roast lamb or steak scraps. That was fine, as long as you kept a lookout where you walked in the backyard. At least Buddy never smelt after meat. There's a picture of Buddy sleeping under the chair. One day, Lucy's second best friend, Charlotte, came to visit. They had been second best friends forever. Well, since they were in kinder, when Charlotte had taken Lucy's favourite doll and hidden it in the toilet. Not in the room, but in the toilet itself. The teachers had to pull the soggy doll out by her legs and take an even soggier Lucy to find some dry clothes. How could they be best friends after that? Second best friends would have to do. Charlotte was crying when she arrived at Lucy's house. We're moving to Adelaide, she told Lucy. Dad's got a new job. We're leaving next week. The two friends hugged each other. We can still be friends. We can email each other every day. Lucy didn't know what to say. She wasn't allowed to send emails. Mum and Dad thought she was too young. Mum and Dad said I can't take Albertine. We're not allowed to have pets at our new house. Tears ran down Charlotte's cheeks, so I told them you would look after her. Despite Charlotte being her second best friend, Lucy had no idea who or what Albertine was. But that didn't matter. Albertine was a pet. She would be Lucy's pet. All Lucy would, had to do was ask her parents. She was unsure how to do this. Maybe she could ask them in the middle of another conversation. Maybe she could just bring Albertine home. Maybe she could just come straight out and ask them. Lucy decided that was the best thing to do. So she waited until Charlotte had gone home. Mum and Dad were in the lounge room. The television was on but they were both reading. Um, Charlotte's moving to Adelaide and she told her parents I could have Albertine. Is that okay? 
Oh, I don't think so, dear. Mum didn't look too pleased with the suggestion. But why not? Lucy was surprised that Mum didn't ask what Albertine was. I promised to look after her. How hard can it be? Please? Well, what about the fish Uncle Rob bought you for your birthday last year? It died because you didn't feed it, Mum reminded her. And the budgie we gave you the year before that? Dad was trying to read the paper, but Buddy kept climbing onto his knee. The smell wafting from that direction gave away that Buddy, or maybe Dad, had eaten what they'd eaten for dinner last night. You don't look after Buddy now, Lucy, Mum continued. I asked you last weekend if you could give him a bath and he didn't get one. Smell him sometime. But Buddy isn't my dog. He's not just my dog. He's the family dog. And besides, Mum, he doesn't really need a bath. He smells like that all of the time. Lucy looked down at, as Buddy tried to climb up onto her lap. She did her best to cover her nose, but nothing was going to block out that doggy smell. Dad put down the paper on the table. Maybe we could come to some arrangement, he suggested. A trial period, maybe. If you don't look after Albertine, then we give her away. Lucy looked from Dad to Mum. You would have to feed her, clean up after her, whatever it takes to make sure that Albertine is properly cared for. Mum's tone suggested she didn't really approve. For how long? Lucy was starting to get excited. Maybe she was going to get Albertine after all. Two weeks, Mum and Dad said at the same time. Lucy gave her parents a big hug. I promise, she cried excitedly. By the way, Dad said, exactly what is Albertine? Lucy didn't answer. She had already gone to ring Charlotte. And that's the end of the first chapter. I wonder if you can guess what Albertine is. There's a little clue on the front of the book. And if you look in the story corner, there are another couple of little clues on the table back here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that first chapter of Lucy's Pet Dilemma. If you did and you would like a copy for yourself, you can order the book online, you could ask at your local bookshop, or you could try your local library. That's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.